Hello everyone, this video covers section 5.1, random variables. From now on, the whole semester is going to be um, based on random variables. Like we talk in chapter 1, there is two kinds of variables, discrete and continuous. Well, there is also qualitative, but we will focus mainly on discrete and, and continuous. Section 5.1 is going to be about discrete random variables. Random variables sometimes are just called random um, distributions. So you hear the word distribution or variable in the context of random variables, it will be the same thing. So first of all, what is a, a random variable? Now let me refresh your memory from algebra. In algebra, you have 2x equals to 6. Well, clearly the x is the the variable and clearly the answer is is three and that's it that's the end of the story now in probability things are slightly different now the next example is not quite true but it's good for illustration purposes it illustrates the whole point let's say you have two x equals to six the first thing you should notice is that the x is a capital letter, not a lowercase. Now, random variable means this. The answer could be 0, the answer could be 3, or the answer could be negative 2, and so forth. But each of them has a probability of being the solution. Like this will be 1 4, 1 half and one four. In order to be a random variable, the main condition is that all the probabilities have to add to one. And if this is the case, then this is called a probability distribution. You cannot have a random variable without a probability distribution. And if you have a probability distribution, it has to belong to a random variable. The only condition is that the probabilities have to be legal and they have to add to 1. As you can see, uh, capital X is going to denote the random variable and lowercase all the possible values of X. The possible values of X, as well as the, the probabilities, they are either given to you, they should be obvious, or you need to to find it and this is the the part where people will have the hardest time now a little bit more of notation most of the time we write this but if you want to be clear you should write this one for example based on this if I write p of 3 that's asking what's the probability when x is 3 what well, the probability is one half but if I wanted to be clear then I would write the probability that the random variable is equals to 3 equals to to one half now let's just make official the properties I just told you this already in here now let's make it official the probabilities of a random variable are this first all the probabilities have to be positive and when you add all of them, it has to equal to 1, which is the case here. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, these values are either given to you, they should be obvious, or you need to do work to find it, just like you did in section 4.1 or in chapter 4. So let's do an example where the values are just given to you, everything is given. Here, all you have to do is check to see if it is a random variable. Notice that these values can be positive or it can be negative. All you have to check is that the values add to one, which in this case it is. So therefore, yeah, this is a random variable. One of the best ways to visualize a random variable is to think of it as a game in a casino. For example, the negative three 
means that if you play a particular game, you will lose $3 and there is a 40% chance of that happening. There is a 20% chance of breaking even, a 30% chance of making $1, and a 10% chance of making $4. If this adds to 1, then this game will be a random variable. In fact, all games in any casino are actually random variables. Remember that when it comes to random variables, all you have to do is check that the probabilities add to one and that they are legal probabilities. Remember, legal means they have to be between zero and one. So on the homework, you may have questions like this. And then it will ask you for which value of k is this a random variable. Well, clearly, this had to add to, to one, right? So therefore, that means that 4k has to equal to 1, which means that the value for k should be 1 over 4. And that's it. In the same way, if I ask you for which value of, let's say, t is this a random variable, well, clearly, the number that I just erase is 0.2. So therefore, t will be 0.2 and so forth. Sometimes, you also have questions like this, which people think are very hard, but actually pretty easy. This is related to this table, and it will ask you what's the probability that x is greater than 0. Greater than 0 means 1 and 4. So this is pretty much asking you what's the probability that x will be 1, plus the probability that x will be 4. Well, that will be 0 0.3 plus 0 0.1, which is equal to 0 0.4. And that's it. Very simple. Now, let's do an example where the values of x and the probabilities should be obvious. Here, let's say that x is the outcomes that you buy a raffle ticket. There is only two outcomes. You either win or you lose. You can uh, tie a raffle. Given this information, the price is $500. The number of tickets sold is 500 And the price per ticket is $2. So, therefore... This is a case where it should be obvious what the values are. Well, if you win, you win $498. Why? Because you have to pay $2 for the ticket. And if you lose, well, you will lose $2. Now, the probability of winning should be obvious. If you buy one ticket, it will be 1 over 500. The probability you're going to lose should also be obvious. It will be 4 99 over 500. If you add the probabilities, this is 500 over 500, which is equals to 1. So therefore, this is also a random variable. This is actually a discrete random variable. Everything in Chapter 5 is discrete. Now let's do an example where you need to find everything. We actually did this problem in a uh, section 4.1. It was the first example we did, example one. But now this one is very specific. In uh, section 4.1, the question was if a family has three kids. Now here it's very specific. X is the number of boys. These values should be obvious. This is what you had to work to get. And we did this already. But if somebody has three kids and you're focused on the number of boys, there is four things that can happen. They have zero boys, which means it was all girls, one boy, two boys, and three boys. We got the answer to this, like I told you in section 4.1. Remember, we have a three diagram like this. And from there, we got the probabilities. You should go back and check. This was one A, three eighths, three eighths, and one eight. And if you add everything, this is equals to eight over eight, which is one. And this will be the hardest questions in 4.1 because you have to do all this extra work just to find the, the values. Otherwise, this is straightforward. Every random variable has something called the expected value 
and something else called the, the variance. The expected value is technically the, the average of a random variable and is denoted by this expected value of x. The symbol is mu, which we talk about actually the first day of class. Remember, we talk about parameters. And by definition, this is equal to the sum of x times p of x, which will just be the sum of this column. Now the variance, this is the symbol for variance, and is equal to the expected value of x squared minus mu squared. All the information to get this value and this will came straight from, or will come straight from this table. This is actually easier than the stuff you did in uh, section 3.1 or 3.2 because you don't have to find any midpoints or anything like that. Now, the hard part here could be if you don't have these values, you have to find them first. But assuming you have that, the first thing you need to do, always check that this adds to one. If this is not equal to one, then this is not a random variable, and there is no need to find the mean and the expected value and the variance because they do not exists. To complete this column, all you have to do is multiply this one and this one. If we do that, you get minus 0 0.6, 0, 0.9, and 0.5. If you add everything up, you end up with 0.8. And this is the, the mean or the expected value. Yes, it is that easy. The second column, you have to be careful Remember that when you square a number, you always gonna get a positive number. So all the values here had to be positive. The first one is telling you x squared, so that will be minus three squared times p of x. So in this case, it will be nine times 0.2, which is equals to 1.8. If you do that for all of them, you will end up with these values. You should really check this and this is 2.5. If you add everything, you end up with 7.0. This is not the variance, but this is the expected value of x squared. So therefore, now you have all the information to plug it into the equation. So remember the equation goes here. I'm gonna write it one more time. The expected value of x squared is 7.0 the expected value of x or mu is 0.8 then you have to square the value so then this is 7.0 minus 0.64 this is 6.36 remember that this is the the variance if you want the standard deviation this is the standard deviation then you take the square root of that. And the square root of 6.36 .6 is around 2.52. That's it. Now, make sure that you don't confuse this formula with a sample formula from chapter 3.2. The formula there was this. And even though they look similar, they are not the same. In fact, this is actually an approximation to that one. So do not use this formula. In the next example, it will explain why the expected value is a big deal or why it's even called expected value. We have this example before. Remember this was 498, negative two, one over 500, 499 over 500. Remember, this was a random variable because this adds to one, and you need to check them. To find the last column, or well, you just have to multiply these two. So this will give you 498 over 500. If you multiply this times that one, is minus 998 over 500, and you should definitely check this is minus 500 over 500 which is equals to negative one remember this is the mean or this is the 
expected value the expected value is one of the most important things for casinos because if the expected value is negative that means the casino is going to be making money from you so they are expecting to make money if it is negative because you're going to lose for example let's say that this instead of being a raffle this is a a game any game in las vegas or any casino uh, that you can play as many times as you want so to play you pay two dollars if you win you win 498 and if you lose you only lose two dollars well that sounds like a great deal and that's what the casinos wants you to think however the thing you should focus is on the expected value since the expected value is negative one that means every time you play this game you are expected to lose one dollar that's what it actually means it doesn't mean you're going to lose one dollar every game but you are expected to lose one dollar so that means if you play this game let's say a thousand times you are expected to lose a thousand dollars and that's it now we didn't find the standard deviation but if the standard deviation is big that means it's going to take you a while to lose the money if the standard deviation is small that means you probably will lose the money pretty pretty quickly so the expected value is pretty much the secret weapon of casinos because it ensures that they will be making money the only thing required for this to work is time that's why they want to keep you in a casino as long as they can by giving you free drinks free food and free rooms and so forth all right so that's it for 5.1 remember from now on everything is going to be about random random variables 